All right, what's going on, everybody? This video, we're going to learn how to evaluate the inverse trig functions in Excel. So remember, you got you got your inverse sine, cosine, tangent, and the and inverse cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And if you if you remember from from your trig class, you could instead of inverse sine you know the sine with the negative one there it's also arc sine or arc cosine or arc tangent and so on and the the formula to do to uh evaluate these things in excel let me make this a little let me zoom in a little more so we can see it better all right so to do it let's just Let's do the inverse sine of 0.5. And we know the inverse sine of 0.5 would be what? 30 degrees. All right. So we've got inverse and we would type in a sine. All right. So that, that means the arc sine. This one right here is the arc hyperbolic sine. Okay. But all we're doing now is sine, cosine, tangent, and so on. And so we do parentheses, 0.5, close the parentheses, and we hit enter. And look what we get. Okay. All right. So what's the deal with this? Well, whenever you calculate the inverse trig functions in Excel, it returns the angle measure in radians. Okay, so this is in radians. Now, if you watch my other video on evaluating the trig functions, we went over how to do all the converting to degrees. Okay, so let's let's go over two ways we can do this in Excel. Uh, so the first way, remember, remember this angle measure here. This is in radians, so we need to convert from radians to degrees. So what would we do? Well, we would have to what? Multiply by 180 and then we divide by pi. All right, so I did this in the other video, uh, but let's let's look. If, if, if I type in this pi here and hit enter, look what happens. I get this, this error message here, okay? And why is that? Well, that's because when you type in pi to divide by the number pi, you have to put the parentheses there like this. Okay, you've got to put these parentheses. And then if you hit enter, there's your 30 degrees. And see that, and that's what we did. We converted it to uh, the radians to degrees. Now let's let's do the same thing. Let's take the inverse sine of 0.5. But let's use a different way to convert to degrees. And so let's do equals. Now, and let's just go ahead and put this in. All right. So once again, that's going to give us the radian measure. Well, how can I convert this to degrees? Well, there's a, there's a function in Excel that does that for you. So what we would do is we would type in degrees. And then you would need you would need to put the parentheses around the whole thing, and then you hit enter, and there's your 30 degrees. All right. So you know, I mean, if you're going to do that, go ahead and type the degrees. So for instance, if we did, if we want to do the inverse cosine of 0.5, what I would do, and I wanted to answer in degrees, I would just type equals, and then degrees, and then a cosine. 0.5, close the parentheses, and then we'll need another one. Remember, however many open parentheses, you got to have the same amount of closed parentheses, and this should give us 60 degrees. And there's your answer. All right. Now, what, ha what, what happens if you did something like this? A little, little less in here, say 1.5. If we want to do the, the arc sine or the inverse sine of 1.5, what is that going to give us? Oh, what does this give us? That gives us, 
we get an error message, don't we? Okay, you see that? Now, do you do you know why it's giving us an error message? Well, that's because we can only take the inverse sine and inverse cosine of numbers between negative 1 and 1. Okay, remember that from trig class. So if you get an error message like this, or you get this num right here, then check to make sure you type this in right, what you're taking the inverse sign of. And then, you know, we can also do, uh, let's do equals a secant. Let's do secant. Well, let's go ahead and put the degrees there. All right. And let's do a secant. And we'll do what? Let's do two. Uh-oh, what happened there? Let's see. So, so, so what happened there? Well, well, let's see. If you, if you watch my other video, we took the sine, we took the cosine, we took the tangent. I think we did a secant, maybe cosecant and cotangent. You can take, you can find those values. But Excel will not do the inverse of secant cosecant or cotangent okay so you can only do inverse sine cosine and tangent so what would happen what would happen if you had something like this Let, let's say you had secant x equals say I don't know uh, Let's just do uh, two-thirds, okay? What if you had that as a problem, okay? How, I'm sorry, it wouldn't be two-thirds, would it? It would be three-halves. What if you had this? Secant x equals three-halves. Now, I had two-thirds. Why did I say that can't happen? Because anytime you take the secant or cosecant of a number, it's either smaller than negative one or larger than positive one. Okay? So that's why I changed it to the three halves. All right, now, how would we how would we find the in the angle measure here, x? Well, you would have to rewrite this as cosine x equals two over three. All right? So remember, secant and cosine are reciprocals of each other. So if secant is equal to 3 halves, then cosine is equal to 2 thirds. And so now we would take the inverse cosine of 2 thirds. And so that would equal, and then we would put degrees, a cosine of 2 divided by 3, and we would hit enter. And that gives us 48 point whatever degrees. All right. So that's how you would work that out if, if you had to do the inverse secant, cosecant, or cotangent. All right. So hopefully this video helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see y'all later.